Hey guys, this video goes with chapter 6 for microeconomics. Uh, I sent you guys a couple videos that are kind of produced uh, for total product and marginal product. Today we're going to associate those ideas of total product and marginal product with the marginal cost curve. Hey, I'm going to be sending you guys another series of cost videos. You'll want to watch those all together and, and connect these ideas. So, for total product, we're in our quadrant and we've got quantity on the vertical and we've got factors of production on the horizontal. It could be like a certain number of workers. Uh, in the video, you know, it's really produced, so I'm just kind of sketching it out. So the other videos are better. So that's kind of what a total product curve looks like. Total product just means all the output that the firm produces. So this measures all the output. So if we have zero factors of production, zero inputs, we're going to have zero quantity, zero output. It kind of says as we add factors of production, we produce more output. In the first video for total product, it says that we divide this total product schedule into kind of three zones, kind of like this. And this first zone is a zone of increasing returns. Uh, increasing returns just means that when you add a factor of production, output goes up than the time before. So let's say uh, we want to make leather bags in our factory and I hire Mary. And Mary's a great worker. I looked at everybody's resume. She was number one, so I hired her first. And when I hire Mary, she makes 10 bags. Let's say that the demand for our bags goes up. And so I hire my number two worker, who is Ian. And uh, together, Mary and Ian make 22 bags. Now, that would be odd to me because I thought Mary was the best worker. She had the best resume. And it turns out I hired Ian, and it looks like Ian is actually more productive. What it really might be is that they're complementary strengths working together, that they've kind of had the ability to use division of labor and specialization. That's what's actually increased their output. In any case, I added one more worker, but output went up more than the time before. When we hired Mary, it was 10. When we hired Ian, we added 12, making it total product of 22. That's a period of increasing returns. Hey, that's this period here where output's going up faster than inputs. We hired one output, we hired one input, sorry, one input Mary, output went up by 10. We hired an additional input Ian, output went up by 12 increasing returns. Let's say I hire another input, Siobhan. Now you got to remember Siobhan's the third person we hire. She's not quite as good as the others. So when we hire her, we would expect output to go down, total output to go up, but added output to go down, and it does. Let's say that we get a total of 30 between all three of them. So we could say, well, we can attribute 10 pieces to Mary, 12 pieces to Ian, and 8 pieces to Siobhan. And it's not that Siobhan is lazy, or that Siobhan is tired, or, or she, she doesn't work hard. It's that we start running into this problem called diminishing marginal returns. And that just means as long as we add variable outputs, like labor, to a set of outputs where at least one is fixed, like we keep adding workers to our factory where we make leather bags, at some point, the point of decreasing returns, diminishing returns, at some point, output starts going up slower than inputs. That's just DMR. That's diminishing marginal returns. If we continue to add factors, we might even get to a point of negative returns. Firms usually don't get to that point. Hey, make sure that you watch the videos on total product and marginal product. To, I was just shaking off my son there, my cameraman. Total product and marginal product to, to make sure that you understand these principles. Now we want to take those ideas and tie them in with marginal cost. Now marginal cost is the change in our total cost when we change the quantity. For marginal cost, I'm going to be measuring cost on the vertical and quantity on the horizontal. Hey, with total product and marginal product, it's all inputs and outputs. There's no money. With marginal cost, we're looking at the changes in our cost when we change our production, our quantity. You want to watch the video on marginal cost. It's going to be in the next announcement to you guys. Hey, marginal cost is an up parabola, but it has a kind of J shape. It kind of looks like this. 
So we have a downward sloping portion of this quadratic and an upward sloping portion. Believe it or not, these parts of the schedule relate to diminishing marginal returns, marginal physical product, and total product. Let's see how. Hey guys, when we're producing output and we're on this kind of downward sloping part of our marginal product, I'm so sorry, on the marginal cost curve, we're on the downward sloping part of our marginal cost curve, that means that our firm is in a period of increasing returns. It means that output's rising faster than inputs, and it also means that output's rising faster than cost. That brings our added, or our marginal cost, down. So that's the downward sloping part of the curve. At some point in production, we're going to run into diminishing marginal returns. So we're going to continue to add inputs, factors of production, but output will start to rise at a slower pace. That means that cost is going to rise faster than output, and that brings us to our upward sloping portion of the marginal cost curve. So this marginal cost curve slopes down when a firm is in the region of increasing returns on the total product schedule, and the marginal cost curve slopes up when the firm is in the diminishing or decreasing returns on the total product curve. This marginal cost curve is an important curve because it helps us understand the shape of the average total cost curve and even the average variable cost curve. In another video, we're going to go ahead and we will tie all of those cost curves together for you. This is just the relationship of marginal cost with uh, total product and marginal product. Thanks for watching.